No, you can't use fire, water, poison, or explosions. Okay. Screw it. I'll just bury them. Never change, Orc Bog. Never change. What's up? It's Truth Hero, and welcome to this Goblin Slayer Episode 9 review. If there's one thing that this episode does right, it's not the animation, not the battles, it's certainly not character development, although we do have a little bit, but rather it's exploring trauma and how our sometimes unwillingness to accept and even understand others' trauma causes both sides to become stagnant and the conflict or situation to sometimes spiral out of control. This of course being the Demon Lord's cult that is responsible for killing girls. In Goblin Slayer Episode 9, we finally get an answer to the question that was asked in the previous episode, which is, who exactly is helping these goblins? We find out that it's a cult of the Demon Lord, and that they place a mirror under the city, which acts as a portal between the goblins world and the adventurer world, thus allowing them to go through and invade and live in the sewers. This prompts Sword Maiden to sort of panic and create a setup where Goblin Slayer is called, as he's the only one that can slay these goblins which he does, quite effectively. Now, in case there's any confusion, the reason why the Sword Maiden put the white or the alligator in the sewer and only handed out shoddy maps to adventurers was because she wanted to prevent them from going down there. Think about it. If some hotshot adventurer goes down to the sewer and kills everything and finds out that this was just the Demon Lord's cults doing, He'll be rather suspicious of why the Sword Maiden didn't do it in the first place and why she didn't personally handle the situation since she dealt with the Demon Lord herself. She also did this knowing that Goblin Slayer probably wouldn't question her as much and that he'd be the only one slaying goblins. Now he does question her, and we'll explore this later in the video, but it's not as much as some high-ranking adventurer would. He certainly shows her a lot of sympathy here. Now that we're all caught up, let's explore Sword Maiden's Catch-22 situation here. She knows the cult is responsible for the death of the girls, and that they've placed a mirror under the city, which lets the goblins come through. My question for you guys is, what exactly are her options here? Let's take it step by step. Option 1 is to admit that the cult is responsible. She would then be expected to deal with them, since she was the one who killed the demon lord. The only problem is, she has PTSD from her past trauma of being raped and tortured by goblins. She can't confront a goblin. She even tells Goblin Slayer at the end of the episode she can't sleep right due to nightmares. Option 2 is blaming it directly on goblins, which is untrue. The problem with this is that the army won't mobilize against them because they don't see goblins as a huge threat. The demon cult will be in place, the mirror will be there, the goblins will keep coming through, and girls will keep dying. Great. Comment below right now, is there any way the Sword Maiden could have solved this problem without sort of setting it up to lure Goblin Slayer in to slay the goblins. Is there any way she could have done this without being even dishonest? I don't think so. And I also don't think it's her fault. Even though the emotional conversation at the end was actually quite confusing, this episode did do a good job in exploring what happens when we let trauma fester, what happens when we don't understand or sympathize with others' trauma, and when we don't heal that trauma. Sword Maiden is truly stuck between a rock and a hard place here, much like those goblins. But seriously, she is paralyzed by her trauma and PTSD and can't take action against the goblins. But that's not the only thing. She also feels that she can't reach out for help because of expectations put upon her. After all, guys, she's the Sword Maiden, the brave warrior who stood up against the Demon Lord. What, you can't slay a few goblins? I don't think people would even believe her PTSD and trauma and her hesitation that she feels. Even if they knew her trauma was true, I think they would still have high expectations for their warrior and say that she should just suck it up and slay goblins. What's even more concerning here is how society, specifically the army, views this trauma and goblin attacks. The army won't mobilize against goblins because they don't see them as a big threat. By society and people not understanding this trauma and the gravity of goblin attacks, they continue to persist, and people keep suffering the same trauma over and over again. It's a vicious cycle. Goblin Slayer confronts her at the end about her trauma, but he ultimately understands this trauma as he's witnessed it before. He says that he'll continue to slay goblins even if it doesn't do a thing. 
It's the right thing to do. By understanding the trauma, Goblin Slayer takes the plight of goblins seriously more than anyone in society. Sword Maiden is obviously apologetic about what she did, and Goblin Slayer understands. He's not gonna punish her, because, well, she's not a goblin. Same old orc bulg. Goblins here are a metaphor for trauma. It could have been demons, trolls, whatever, it doesn't matter. The lesson here is that no one really cares about trauma until they experience it. Other, more happy notes on this episode. That kick though. Here's my question for you. At the end of the episode, when Sword Maiden is talking to Goblin Slayer, there is a lizard that is watching their conversation. What is this? Is it a spy? Comment below what you think it is. As always, thanks for watching. If you like Goblin Slayer content and want more of these Goblin Slayer episode reviews, consider joining my adventure party by hitting the subscribe button down below. Until next time, see ya.